Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Though the storms may be raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. I know the hope that lies within me is reassured. That if I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know you lead me safely to the blessed he has prepared and if the storm won't cease and if Oh, 
Sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. I know the hope that lies within misery assured that if I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he me saved the blessed place he has prepared. Oh, and if the storm
The storm decide not to stop. And the wind decide to continue to blow. One thing I know. And one thing you should know. Where your soul is anchored. Amen. We thank God this morning our soul is not anchored in Buddha and Shuntai and Charles Taz Russell, Eddie Baker, neither Mohammed. But we know this morning that our souls are anchored in the Lord. Amen. And when we know that, it doesn't matter what storm comes, we are holding on to his unchanging hands. Amen. And we thank God this morning that we serve a true and living God. Amen. Anybody thank God this morning that, amen. Uh, Somebody woke up this morning in India and had to go to a cow. Amen. To bow and worship. And somebody had to go to some statue. Statue of fertilization, statue of wealth, and statue of health. Amen. But we just go to Jehovah God. Amen. Who is the author. And the finisher for faith. Amen. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm so glad that the true and living God found me. Yeah. Anybody excited this morning that the true and living God, Jehovah Elohim, the God that said, let there be and there was. Hallelujah, the creator of the universe, my God, amen. So we thank God this morning, amen, for his presence in our life and to all the, um, the officials, the clergies in our presence, to my wife, Dr. Samuels, to all of God's wonderful people, amen. Certainly thank God for the young MC this morning. Amen. And the little one shall lead you. Hallelujah. Amen. Get your Bibles. And please be reminded that he 
here, although you may have your iPad and your tablet and your computer and your phone, we, we do solicit your obedience in bringing the Bible to church. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Anybody excited about the Lord this morning? Amen. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. It's just me. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Amen. Thank God. He's such a loving God. Amen. Even when we are rebellious and disobedient. Amen. I was thinking about him this week very deeply. and Just the thought that he died for me when I was a mess. Anybody with me? Amen. He didn't wait until I become righteous through him before he died for me. He died for me when I was a mess. Amen. I was trying to put together something in my head, you know, but he's great. Amen. Is he great to somebody here this morning? Amen. When you roll over this morning and put your feet on the ground, it's because of him. Somebody say amen. Amen. And we love him this morning. Book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Amen. Just for a few minutes, we're going to encourage your spirit a little bit from the word of the Lord. And we're going to be looking at the 23rd verse. And it reads as follows. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let we look at 24 also, and that you may put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Let us say the scripture of the hour, and that, uh, so rather, the Timothy chapter, therefore, Yes, at any time I was made to understand. Let us pray. Father, we are eternally grateful this morning that we can come to you in one place and a unit that you will speak to us this morning from your word. We pray for special anointing upon your people and upon your servant this lips of clay that you will anoint them, anoint my hearing that I may hear from you to speak to the hearts of your people. We thank you again in advance. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. I'm going to ask you just to stay awake a little bit. Take your seats. Amen. I am feeling as usual because we were taken from the dust of the ground anytime it rains the human body tend to behave like it wants to sleep amen uh, gets you lazy somebody say amen want to uh, put a closure to the text that I've been uh, dealing with for the past two weeks, the renewing of our minds. Somebody say amen. And um, I tried to figure out why uh, last week I didn't feel complete in 
delivering that message to you. So um, I feel more or less that the Lord wanted me to uh, continue to share with us about the renewed mind. We were dealing with the renewing of our minds, which allows us to erase some of our our habits, our intents, or uh, the way we see things, uh, the way we do things, and uh, replace that which we erase with the word of God. And the uh, some of the reasons why you find yourself don't want to read or only read uh, two verses per day is because if uh, our enemy uh, allows us to be in depth with the word, then uh, he know that he will have a fight on his hand. So it, we get to a place sometimes in our Christian journey where we really don't want to read the word. You don't have to say amen. And uh, there's a struggle between uh, the reading on the word and getting to work on time or to do other things. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to nobody, but just few. And uh, because of that, I may also uh, help you to understand that um, the reason why you can stay up all night and be on the cell phone or the iPod and uh, read the newspaper, read other books, but the minute you take up the Bible, you don't fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So I, I will also recommend this as a, um, a, a form of uh, uh, situation that will help you go to bed if you have sleepless nights. If you can't fall asleep, find your Bible. Amen. So we, we have been... Uh, uh, captivated by thoughts of our mind and how we see things and how we want to deal with things, but uh, that's not what the renewed mind gives because when your mind has become renewed, uh, we don't think uh, the way we used to think. Uh -huh. We don't behave that way. Now the word is in control of our behavior. Somebody can say amen. Amen. Uh, we, don't, we no longer rely on how we think to give a response. Amen. You, you slap me, uh, the Bible said to, um, if I may borrow that scripture, not really what it means, but uh, turn the other cheek and be humble about it. You talk about me, uh, I'm not going to hate you because the Bible said to love. And not just to love, but to love your neighbor as yourself. And oftentimes our neighbor don't behave well for us to love them, but uh, I can't hate my neighbor. Is anybody here with me? I'm almost finished. Don't, don't, don't get... So, so the, the, the things that uh, our own intuition would have uh, directed us to do, we can't do them because if we follow us, Oh, Lord, have mercy this morning. If we follow how uh, 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 I should repay you for the things you have done to me, then I'm going to really get out of line with God. I wish I can talk to somebody here this morning. So we got to renew our mind by the reading of the word. And I told you last week, how can a young man cleanse his way by what? taken heed thereof by the word of God. So when the word replaces our mental behavior, how we, 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 we think about things, how we feel like doing things, amen, the word will replace that and cause us, amen, to please God. And the Bible says, if we please God, he will what? Give us the desires of our hearts. And if, if we're not pleasing God, we're not going to get the desires of our hearts. Amen. 
So when the word of God now come into us as we study and as we read and as we dissect the word and live the word, we're not just only to read the word, but we must activate the word in our minds. Let the word live in us. Amen. Let the word direct us. Amen. The Bible says in all what? Our ways acknowledge him that he may what? Direct our path. So we no more can walk down uh, uh, the intellectual behavior of our minds. Talk to somebody and tell them your mind will just mess you up. For real. But if we follow the precepts and the concepts of the word of God, we will never be detoured. Somebody say amen. So we need to align our thoughts with what? The word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, in order to get this transformation, uh, uh, that we may not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, we must what? renew our mind by the word of God. That's the only thing that's going to do it. When you empty that computer of all its junk, you got to replace it with something that is good. Amen. And we cannot, I reemphasize myself, we cannot depend on how we feel to deal with things. We cannot depend on, on, on our own uh, uh, rely on ourselves because this flesh this carnal uh, mental behavior that we have it will cause us to get into trouble but the word of God is a light what? and a what? and a lamp unto a path so the word will what? direct us Somebody say amen. amen. If I should try to repay you for what you have done to me, some people groaning, I can hear you. How many of you have been in a situation where you're saying, if it was one time, And you ever get to the point of saying, you don't really know who I was. <laughs> but I am not what I was. I wish I could talk to somebody here this morning. Because if I was what I was, you wouldn't be really standing in front of me disrespecting me. But I have been transformed by the renewing of my mind so when I'm supposed to slap you, I walk away from you and pray for you and love you. So our behavior should be changed. So don't tell me you are a Christian, a Bible reading believer. And your behavior and your attitude is still the same like as before you got saved. The word came to what? Change us. To transform us from the old man to a new person in Christ. And if there is no transformation in your life by the word of God, there is no relationship. Show me a non-reader of the word. And I'll show you somebody who's about to backslide. It's the word that's going to keep us. It's the word that's going to protect us. Thy word, David said, have I hid in my heart that I may not transgress against God. So, I've been saved for 
five years, but there have never been a transformation. No change. You see, the change is this. We are now under, when you got saved, you become under new management. Big sign goes up under new management. The devil is no more my manager. And the moment you begin to do devilish things, you are now being manipulated by the devil. I wish I could get somebody to say amen. But the transformation of our mind causes us not to want to do what we feel like doing, but doing what the word says we should do. Paul says, when I feel like what? Doing good, evil is always present. And the good that I should, that's Paul speaking, the good that I should, I don't do it. What I should have been doing that is good, I don't do it. But the evil that I shouldn't, that's what I do. Somebody said, well, preacher, I've been having struggles in choosing uh, the right thing to do when I find myself doing the wrong. There's nothing wrong with finding yourself doing the wrong. But when you're continuously doing the wrong, something is wrong with the wrong that you're doing. And I dare you to get up and say, well, I can't help myself. The devil is a liar. Or blame the devil to keep you into a situation that is ungodly. And say, I can't help myself. Well, maybe we get somebody to come and babysit you to take you to the bathroom then. Touch somebody. It's got to be a change. It's got to be a change. I can't dress the way I used to. It's got to be a change. Is, is anybody here with me? I, I, I just can't talk the, the things I used to talk. And it behooves me when, when somebody told me, I think I said this last week, that their best friend is an unsafe person. It behooves me. What are you going to talk about? How long are you going to hold a conversation about uh, what they have done last week and week before last before you're able to come and say, well, you know, God is good. How long your bestie is unsaved? By the time the week is over, you're going to be going to the nightclub with your bestie before your bestie comes to church with you. So, we got to renew this. And may I re emphasize, and if I should do a survey today, and your reading habit, a good number of us would be in default. And the reason why you would be in default is because there is an enemy. Not just an enemy, but an enemy of your soul. That don't want you to know the precepts and the judgments and the commandments of God. Because he once was living with God. And if, if, you, if you take on the commandments and the judgments and the precepts of God, you're going to be too dangerous for his kingdom. So he keeps us out of the word. 
There ain't nobody saying nothing to me. He keeps us from reading the word. And now the enemy produces uh, 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 something called the web. And we, uh, we all get caught up in the web instead of getting caught up into the word of God. Uh, our technology has become uh, uh, the, the theme of the hour. We spend more time over there than over here. And so if, if we really sit down and study the word, we'll deal better with one another. I love you better. I, I care for you better. I share with you better. I would not be saying words to kill your spirit because I know how to talk to you. Because the word of God would have already taught me how to talk to you. But we hate one another. We despise one another. We malice one another. But if the word of God would have settled in our spirits. That let not the sun go down on your wrath. I gave you the remedy last week, right? If it's after six, the sun has already gone down. So you have another couple of hours to keep. I wish somebody would laugh. The word is a cleanser. Now the word is a keeper. And the word will transform your carnal mindedness into a life of spirituality and how you deal with things and you see things different from how everybody else has seen it because your life has now been directed by the word and the word of God when you put it in your life to direct you you can't go wrong at all relying on the word Twenty-three and B. For the last two weeks, we dealt on the renewing, the process. The renewing is the process of renewing the mind. But today we look at, or we're looking at, the renewed mind. Why I don't go to the rum bar anymore is because my mind and you're not going to say nothing. You're still looking for the text. Did I just say something? Why I don't have another girlfriend on the side? Uh, you, you're not. You're not. Resp you're not responding to me. My mind is renewed. I'm. I'm home most of the time by myself. Why I don't invite somebody to my house because my wife is at work? Because why I don't tell you off when you mess with my spirit is because. Uh -huh. Why I don't treat you bad when you treat me bad is because every one of us that are listening to me today have things we struggle with. But every struggle, there is a word of recommendation for your struggle. Every one of us have something we're fighting. Uh, some is heavier than the other. Um, somebody in here today might be fighting in the spirit of lust or some form of theft or lying cheating and stealing somebody is struggling 
with something, but let me just share this with you. Although you are struggling with something, you don't have to feed the struggle. Can I say that again? Although you are struggling with something, uh, you don't have to uh, feed the struggle. You, you, you can let the word of God deliver you from the struggle if you know the word of God. You, you don't have to fall in the trap of the enemy. Your struggles come sometimes to test, test your strength in the Lord. Amen. I, I share with you some weeks ago, months ago, a year ago, that I was traveling in the airplane going to Jamaica. I don't know where it was. And I said to God, uh, take away this fear of flying. And I, I, I mustered up myself and I got to, I think it was Jamaica, I got to Jamaica through some turbulences and I wasn't fearful because I mustered myself up for that. And the next time I was flying, I said, God, it looks like I got rid of it, I'm good. And, 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 and turbulence came. And my heart began to, I got into rapido. And I said, God, I thought I got rid of it. And God says, if I don't bring it back every now and then, you won't know whether or not you got rid of it. So the, the struggles, I said that to say, the struggles that you're going through is to allow you or to cause you to find out whether or not you are delivered from the struggle or you're still fighting the struggle. Because if you're struggling with loss, God will allow some sex, I'm talking about the men right now, God will allow some sexy girl to pass and to see what you're thinking in your mind. But if your mind been renewed, I hope I'm talking to somebody. If your mind been renewed, you're not going to look and take that woman to bed and commit adultery in your mind. The greatest battle, my brothers and my sisters, take place in the mind. And your, your high, this, is an instrument to feed the mind. Be careful what you look at. Or how you look at it. Because you're going to look at some things but after a minute, you can't get it out of your mind. And I told you before, it's okay to look. But looking, mm, hallelujah, looking may cause problem in your mind sooner or later. You may thought you look at something and when you get home get in your bed that something I'm, I'm preaching to myself here. come up in your mind what do you do at that moment the word of God we don't behave like the world When the world is looking for us to react negatively towards things, we smile and we walk away. That's how you know a Christian from a grease can. When they disrespect you on the job, and expect you to retaliate. I'm not talking to anybody, just me. And you smile and say hallelujah anyhow. Or you may burst into a song, though the storms. And 
and the wind won't. My soul is anchor. Our behavior is sponsored by the word of God. I, I don't conduct myself godly because I'm saved. I conduct myself godly because the word tells me how to conduct my life. Uh, somebody slap you, you don't have to slap them back. You hear that somebody speak offensively about you, that's the person you need to go love. The word of God is contrary to our carnal thoughts. Ain't nobody going to say Amen. The word of God is contrary to our thoughts. Well, preacher, why you say that? Sometimes the thought that come to mind, my mind, I don't know about you, most of you here born holy, righteous, Sometimes the thoughts that comes to my mind, talking about me, transparent here, if I would have done them, I would have been backslidden. But because I know the word, I'm talking about me. You don't have to put yourself in there because I know all of your thoughts are amen and holy hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, every time. I know you're all born righteous. But sometimes our thoughts, not that we go looking for thoughts, but thoughts came. What do you do when they come? You got to ward them off with the word. Jesus got ambushed right after 40 days of fasting while he was hungered. The devil came and said, well, look, my brother, you should be stronger now in the spirit. Because you just came off of 40 days and 40 nights of fasting. Now, bro, because you're so strong, command these stones to make bread. What did Jesus do? Man, man shall not live by bread alone, but what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. So if the enemy went after Jesus Christ, if the devil went after the master, what will he do to the servants? We are the servants of the true and living God, and the devil is after our soul to mess us up and to make sure that we don't make it into eternity. That's why you got to study the word. The word alone going to help us to get over on the other side. The word. The word of God is so precious. Let's hear this with you as I close. At times I see Dr. Samuels, a lady I know, reading and she bursts out into a big laugh. I say, whoa. And another time she said, woo. And she would do like this in the bed. I said, wow, my God, the word is doing something to her spirit. Ah, shout out, 
It is one thing to read the word if you don't apply or let that word digest into your system. It's a waste of time reading the word. So we must understand. Or may I say this? This non-reading and non-studying and non-applying of the word won't do. Through gospel, we are at a crucial or pivotal point of the church age. And the Bible says in a lot of times that perilous time will come. But we are in a season now that your Bible can be taken away from you any minute. May I say it again so that uh, this church may hear you. After November, there's going to be a major shifting. Not for the world necessarily, but for the church. Major shifting. After November, this might be the last time we can hold this Bible publicly and go to church. And if you don't have the word of God, if you don't have the word of God hidden Deep down on the inside of your spirit, you're going to be in trouble because it's the word that's going to cause us to last. So may I serve you a summon this morning. Evaluate your time and give God God some by reading the word and applying the word. Cut back on your worldly supplies. Cut back on your webbing. Cut back on your Facebook and turn your face in this book and leave serving a warning. Let this be your Facebook. Keep your face in this book. Because when the rubber hit the road, it's going to be what is inside of you versus what's in the book. There's a change coming. Oh, glory to God. There is a change coming. And you better be ready. So then we will know who is on the Lord's side. Then we will know who is the true believer when those changes come. And may I close with this. Those of you who are eligible to vote, vote God. I didn't say to vote for, vote for God when you get there. I said, vote God. Whichever candidate fools you more concerning the morals of Christianity, you can vote for them. Listen to what I said. Whichever candidate fools you more towards the principles of the Bible, you can vote for them. But tell your neighbor, trouble is on its way for the church and there's nothing please excuse me I'm going to say something that might not be palatable to you there's nothing that prayer can do to change that because Jesus is coming 
Hallelujah. I say it again. And some of you might, those of you who are theologically oriented and you're theologically uh, whatever, the change that's coming I don't care how long you turn your plate down for. Prayer and fasting won't be able to do nothing about it. It's the result of end time. So get your house. Get your house in order. Get it right. And keep it right because Jesus is coming. I don't think we're going home today before he comes. I don't think we're going home today before he comes. And whether you're ready or not, here he comes. Get your house in order. I didn't tell you to be perfect, but to make sure that your book is in the name and your name is in the book. So if you turn the book upside down, your name is still in there. Don't let nobody turn you away from God. Live every day as if it's your last day and as if Jesus can come any minute. Read the Bible and get ready for his return. He's coming. He's coming, saints. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah, he's coming. And whether you're saved or not, He's coming. Whether you believe or not, he's coming. As in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be. So shall it be. And also as in the day of Noah. The days of Sodom and Gomorrah, it was bad. Is it as bad as New York City with gay and lesbians? It's bad. And our God is mad with what we're doing as his people. If Sodom got him mad, New York City. Ah, oh, yes, sir. Look up. Would you do that for me? Look up. Your redemption is here. If you're not saved, get saved and keep safe. There's a philosophy out there that one safe is always saved. That's a lie from hell. If you're saved, you can't be backslide. You can backslide. But if you really love Jesus, you will press on and to see what the end is going to be. God bless you. Stay in the presence of the Lord. Don't leave him alone. And don't go to another church because you won't hear this kind of preaching if you go there. If we go to heaven, poor, it's all right. Because streets of gold is awaiting us. If you don't get that big house while you're here, there's a mansion awaits you. So everything that we might miss out on here, God have it in store for you there. Closing. Don't go to hell. Choose ye this day whom ye serve. And choose heaven. Rest on your feet at this time.